Hello, welcome back to another episode of Pause Break. Today we're going to be talking about a childhood favorite of mine, The Little Mermaid on NES. The Little Mermaid is an NES game that was published by Capcom in 1991. There was a time in Capcom's history where they were putting out pure excellence. Not to say that they don't nowadays, but at this point they were partnered with Disney in bringing us games like DuckTales 1 and 2, Chippendale Rescue Rangers 1 and 2, Darkwing Duck, Mickey Mouse Capades, Magical Quest, starring Mickey Mouse, Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. I could go on forever, baby. But I digress. We'll talk about those other games later. Let me just point out that when I think Capcom Disney games, I think quality. And The Little Mermaid is no exception. The so Little Mermaid is my favorite Disney movie, so I've always had this uh, emotional attachment to it. Yeah, so uh, anyway, I first played this game back in 1991 when I was just five years old. I loved the movie from 1989, and I loved the game on NES. I remember the game being tough, and me and my friends managed to get to the last boss once, but I don't recall ever beating her. I've been looking for the game and its completeness for a while now, and I finally got it the other day, so I thought I'd go ahead and play it, record it, and do a review. Well, it's still a good game. Actually, it's a great game, but it's kind of one of those cases where the nostalgia is a little better than the real thing. So, um, I'm going to be a little more brutal on this one since it kind of pissed on my childhood. Let's talk about it. Apparently this is set after the events of the film, but before the marriage? Hell, honestly, I don't know when this story takes place. Ursula is in power, and she's making the fish of the sea do whatever she wants. Ariel and Eric aren't married yet, but Ariel is still a human and she can transform back into a mermaid at will? It makes absolutely no sense. The story continuity is just... I'm dumbfounded. Maybe Eric and Ariel have been living in sin for a while now. Maybe Ursula is just a good God-fearing witch and is trying to send a message. I mean, I commend Capcom for giving this game a shot at having a story. And the pictures for the story are cool, but damn. They messed this timeline up worse than The Legend of Zelda. As for gameplay, it's a basic... Well, I guess you'd almost call it a platformer slash shooter? You swim around and blast bubbles out of your fin to catch creatures of the sea, and then you fling them at other creatures of the sea. So let me point this out. Let's say I suspend my belief that Ariel can turn back into a mermaid at will, but can't turn back into a human from a mermaid. Let's say that I believe Ursula has had King Triton's crown and trident for an extended period of time, can command the fish of the sea, and the best she can get them to do is wear a white sheet in what I assume is an attempt to scare Ariel. Oh shit, I fought a shark, but this white generic ghost coming at me is too much. There are limits to which I will go to save my friends. All these things. All these things, but what freaks me out is that she's creating bubbles off of her fins underwater. Maybe something's escaping me logically, but I've been thinking about it a while now. How is she completely submerged in water, yet her fin creates bubbles when she curls it a certain way? If you're not as boggled as I am, go to the nearest swimming pool, completely submerge a body part, and then wave it around while still underwater. I don't make bubbles. Maybe you do, but I don't. What I do love is this cover art. If you'll notice, it's actually a scene from the movie. Uh, that's great advertising for someone like me because I like the movie so much, and this is uh, actually why I wanted it and its completeness so bad in the first place. Um, I wasn't going to spoil what the bosses look like in the game because that's kind of the uh, thing I like to do is anticipate what the bosses are going to look like. Maybe they're going to be big, maybe they're going to be really cool, but the bosses are actually on the back of the box. Look at that. Even Ursula, the last boss. What the hell, Capcom? Where's the mystery and anticipation there? I'd like to compare that to something else, but that'd be spoiling other games. Damn you, Capcom! On a different note, I really enjoyed the visual style. 
for the most part, it's very colorful. The sprites look really good, but personally, I think the bosses are awesome. You have a shark, some eels, yeah, that's to be expected, but check out this fish that conducts underwater cannons to fire at you. Holy shit, snacks. I wouldn't have expected that had I not seen it on the back of the box. Anyway, Ursula, the last boss, looks pretty awesome. She's huge, and I feel that's appropriate. The music in the game is alright. My favorite part is the opening screen where you get to hear the familiar Little Mermaid tune, Under the Sea. The rest of the music is actually quite forgettable. I mean, it's good stuff, and I enjoyed it while playing the game, but it's no Mega Man. I won't be putting any of these songs on my iPod. So I'm actually pretty torn about the game. When I was recording footage for it, I was like, this is not as good as I remembered it. But now that it's been a few weeks since I actually recorded the footage, I'm thinking, you know what, that game wasn't so bad. I mean, it's not as good as, say, uh, DuckTales or uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, but still better than that second movie. Whop, whop.